Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Hey, today is Friday and I always love Fridays. Like I always tell you on this broadcast, take the weekend to listen to this broadcast again and again and again. One time will never be enough. Trust me, one time will never be enough. And the more you listen to it, the more the Holy Spirit will bring in understanding to you. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hey, all right. Can we call for that daily bread? Are you ready? Say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Let's, let's turn our Bibles to John chapter 1. Sometimes we just go <laughs> and then we come back. Praise God. I just love teaching the word of God. I can, I can spend weeks just teaching and teaching and teaching. What am I saying? It's, yeah, I can spend years. Now, this is what we're going to spend our whole life doing. Understanding the person of God. Even the angels that were created long ago are still in awe of his person. So, how much more us that have not even engaged much. We, we, most things we know about God is for our aim because we want to use God to achieve certain things. You know what I'm talking about? I need more money, so I'm trying to sort out. I'm trying to think, how will I, how will I get God to answer my prayer? How will I get God? You know, sometimes leave those realms, leave all those things and just come to his person. I want to know you. Because at the end of the day, there is no amount of money you have. Even if you are blessed with billions or trillions of dollars, it will still not satisfy. I'm telling you the truth. It will never satisfy. And it will never be compared to the knowledge of him. Because you see, the more you know him, the more your mind goes off every other thing. The more you know him, everything, Paul said it, whatsoever was, was gained to me, I counted it as dung. You see, when Paul was saying that, I know some of you just pick up phrases and, and, and requote them without understanding the depths. Paul didn't wake up one day and say, I count everything as dung. I want to know God. Uh -uh. He had begun to know him. And the more he knew him, the more he realized nothing else mattered. Yeah. The more he knew God, the more he realized nothing else mattered. Now, when he says nothing else mattered, this is the thinking. I, I, I can actually do without every all those things. This is the intoxicating part of the knowledge of God. It paralyzes you somehow. Now, when I say it paralyzes you somehow, I don't mean physical paralysis. It's the things men strive for. You just realize. Because, because, like, he takes you far. He takes you, you see beyond what men see. And when, when you come back, you, you look at the things men are pursuing. Just shake your head like, I've seen the end of it. You see, like a pastor, you, your natural thoughts will be how to grow your church, how to grow your membership. And then next is how your members will do well. And okay, and then next, how you know they will, you know how God can use you, put your members in strategic positions, and and use you to bring a change. I and mean, when you're a good pastor, now that those are all things you're thinking about. But then you know that these things, the more you begin to expand, the more betrayals come. You understand what I'm saying? And the more betrayals come, the more you are driven to something else and not God. Yeah, yeah. You might still be preaching. You might still be, I need the anointing because now you need to keep up. Everybody coming, you need to satisfy them, okay? And then human beings are that way. They 
they don't really get satisfied with the, the eye coming. They don't, they don't push in for God. Rather, they push in for what they can get. So, miracles, they want miracles. Oh, we want to see miracles, we want to see miracles. Why do they want miracles? Not necessarily because they want to see the awesomeness of God or they want to know God. They want to see miracles, one, so that they will satisfy their needs, okay? Our sickness need will satisfy it, okay? And, and sometimes, amazingly, because we don't want to go spend money in the hospital, we'll get it free and, and, and cheaper here, okay? And, and sometimes, Jesus said it in John chapter 6, he says, you're looking for me not because of the miracle. Take note, not because of the miracle, but because you ate and you are full. Now, not, on ordinary, you think that it's because of the miracles. Well, Jesus said, no, let's look beyond the miracles. If the miracle was me, you know, doing like this and the whole sun turns dark, you may not come. But it's still a miracle. Now, Jesus did a miracle and, and multiplied bread and fish. And, and over 5,000 people ate to their full. And Jesus, now that's, that's awesome. I mean, that's awesome. But then Jesus looked at them and said, it's not the miracle that made you come. It's because you ate. So even in the miracle, you find the selfishness part of it. The, where will benefit you? That's why it's, let's go again. If we continue with this man like this, we'll not be spending our money eating, buying bread or buying food. We'll be eating at his meetings, eating to our satisfaction. So that's how the human mind is. So when you now think as a pastor, yes, I want to have the, the biggest congregation. I want to have the, this. You still will get to the point where you look at all that and realize that's not it. At best, you say, I want to influence people for Jesus. Yes, it's a good thing. But you will look at the end of all that. And all you will have are memories and pictures. Yeah. If you're a businessman, you want to think how you want to establish your businesses all over the world. Yes. But then when, when, when you look at the end of all that, it's still the same thing. Loneliness. If you if you like reading, you like book, you want to be a professor, you want to be a well-read, knowledgeable person that when you speak, yeah, even that will bring you to the place of loneliness. Because you get to that place where it seems nobody understands you. Even in the knowledge of God, yes, there is a loneliness part of it. But the good thing about it is you're not lonely. Because when you are alone, you're on a journey with him. So it cures that loneliness. And he's the only one that can do that for you. John chapter 1. In the beginning, verse 1 now. In the beginning was the word. Please take note. And the word was with God. And the word was God. Look at this. In the beginning was the word. Now remember, John didn't write this first. And then later, in our wrote first John. It's possible you wrote first John before this. Possible. <laughs> yeah, that's not what I'm saying. So he, he's writing this from the place of understanding. Okay? So in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. Who's the him? The word. So, so let's, let's put it in perspective. All things were made by the word, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him, in the word, was life, and the life was the light of men. Take note, the word was the light of men. The word was the light of men, okay? So the... The, the, the life, he said, in him was life. The life that was in the word was for men. Take note of this, please. Okay. 
And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to be a witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light. Now, John that was writing is walked with John the Baptist. The man sent from God is John the Baptist, okay? He was not that light, but was sent to be a witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighted every man that cometh into the world. Take note of this. He lights in, he lightens every man that comes in to the world. He was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not. He came to his own and his own received him not. He came to his own man. He made man. See, that, that's what I told you. He came as a man. Watch this now. He came to his own and his own received him. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, not of the will of the flesh, not of the will of man, but of God. And verse 14 now says, And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now take note of this. He says, And the word was made flesh. Now when you read this, you, 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 you feel in all generations, this is, was a unique thing that the word was made flesh. Okay. But, but the truth is, this is not the first time the word was made flesh. I said something to you earlier. The appearance of the word of God from the book of, from the, from the garden of Eden. It was the word that was made flesh. The word actually comes in flesh. Please understand what I'm saying. He's talking about the Godhead that appears. So, the word was made flesh. The voice in the Garden of Eden was made flesh. Okay? And the word appeared to Abraham. The word appeared to Joshua. The word appeared to Every appearance you've seen of the word or of God is actually the appearance of the word. Now, here, what John was talking about is the word was now made flesh. It is the same thing. In this case, the word, Jesus comes. He comes like an old man. He comes like a young man. He comes like a warrior. He comes like a whatever you know, different experiences that they have all had. But then all those experiences, he came as a man. Okay? And that's the word of God that was made flesh. But then in this case, he came as a seed in the womb of Mary. Now why? Because of what God wanted to do. Why did he have to come? Because truly, Jesus could have come the same way Melchizedek came. Now, Melchizedek was the word of God made flesh. Yes. So, he blessed Abraham. He had meetings with Abraham. They spoke. They had time together. Okay? And other times, God appeared to Abraham. You, you read once. In Genesis 18, when he came with two other men. Now, those two other men were angels. And then Abraham saw them and invited them to come eat lunch. And then they, they sat with him, ate with him. They waited for him. Think about how long it took to kill an animal, roast it, make food, make dinner with it. And then they all ate. Okay? So he was dead that long. And... They finished eating and they went on. And then he said, oh, I hide from Abraham what I want to do. And he told Abraham, well, Sodom and Gomorrah, okay. And then, now that's the word of God made flesh. That was not an angel. That's, that's two angels and the word of God, okay. Every appearance you've ever seen in scripture is the word of God has made flesh. So now in this case, 
because of the salvation that God had planned for man. And when did this plan of salvation start? Please understand, there are two things. Because you must have heard me say this before. It was not the fall of man that made Jesus to come. No. Even before Adam was created, God had planned for Jesus to come. Now, when I say Jesus to come, the word of God. See, already, you already have this pattern that the word of God shows up in the garden. Okay? Now, man created in the image and likeness of God, according to Genesis chapter 1, that was when the father spoke. But in the formation of man, he wasn't in the image. Now, when I say image, the inward abilities and things of God. See? Now, why? Because... Well, number one, man didn't know good from evil. You know that, right? So they had this tree that God said, the day, you know, this tree, this is the, the whatever, this is what this tree is all about. And then there was also the tree of life. Now, those trees were normal trees. Please understand it. They were normal trees. But God tagged them that the day we eat of this tree. So a day will come when I will command you that we should eat of this tree. And when that day comes, this is what's going to happen. You are going to know good and evil. The knowledge of good and evil is not in the tree. Please note, note this because the tree was a normal tree. But the knowledge of good and evil was to be ministered by God. And these are the things people get confused over. Because God said, don't eat of the tree. You just tag that tree that that tree must be a supernatural. It was not a supernatural tree. It was a normal tree. It was their obedience that would have opened up the grace and the anointing. Now, now the day they were to eat of that tree, it's the word of God that would have come and administered that tree to them. See, they would have had a feast. And after the feast, then he would have released the anointing on them to be able to judge. Now, can I tell you something before we close? What... Adam and Eve were supposed to receive on, 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 in, if they had obeyed where that tree is concerned, was what happened to the disciples of Jesus on the day of Pentecost. Yes. <laughs> Go think about it. What Adam and Eve, now not just Adam and Eve, everyone, if they had obeyed God to the right place where they would have eaten of that tree, was exactly now, see when it happened. It didn't happen in Adam, in Abraham. It didn't happen in Enoch. It went, see, see when it happened. It happened on the day of Pentecost. Now, why did it happen on the day of Pentecost? Because now issues had come up that needed to be resolved. Now, this is the reason the word of God had to come in the womb of a woman. Okay? And then she gave birth to Jesus called his name Jesus you know that the plan thank you Holy Spirit so she gave back to Jesus and Jesus grew to so that man will understand something all the 33 years Jesus spent on earth is to make man understand how God created him. Yes. Because prophets have spoken. Teachers have declared. Have you ever thought about what, what they were declaring all this while? Have you ever, what is the gospel? Do you even know? Right from Abraham. Adam sinned. And what, 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 what is the gospel? What has God been communicating? What is God trying to get across to us? We'll talk about that next week. <laughs> God. Yeah, because you need to understand this. Why, why am I sharing all this? It's to, to make you know and understand. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I pray your heart will be opened. 
I pray the Spirit of God will take you and begin to guide you into every truth that you ought to walk in. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I pray that as you listen to this message again and again, your eyes of understanding will be enlightened. The Spirit of God will teach you as He has taught you. And I bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Have a fantastic weekend. I'll see you on Monday.